Week four is here. The Bears are two and one and on the road this week, taking on the also two and one New York Giants. Justin Field may not have the bounce back game this week that we want to see, but running attack and offensive line is ready to go against a very run friendly defense in the New York Giants. We'll hit on that in a little bit. Uh, the defense this week will have their hands full with the number two rusher in the NFL, Saquon Barkley. I hate that I'm playing him this week in fantasy. I don't know if Tony is or not, but going against one of the NFL's other quarterbacks that can't seem to pass the ball at this moment, Daniel Jones, a.k.a. Mitchell Trubisky of the New York Giants when he was on the Bears. Will Montgomery play? Will Vals Jones Jr. play? How's Jalen Johnson to him? We got it all for you guys, and we're here to break it down to you on this beautiful Friday. Happy Friday, everyone, and thanks for tuning in with us. Yep, and we will also have a week our week four recap of this game posted on Monday. Uh, Nick is out of town this weekend, but him and I will be on Twitter and Instagram, so make sure to follow us there for in-game updates um, and our hot, spicy, always correct takes. Uh, so please subscribe to stay up to date. Uh, on all of our content and Nick, I would like to uh, start off with a little update on a fun uh, bear stat we had. Yes. Earlier. I, I believe it was after the Packers game uh, is when okay, we, not going to be a fun stat. Yeah. It's, or is it a fun relative, good stat that we overlooked because it was a bad game? Yeah, uh, well, it's a relative stat and or it's relatively good from where it was. So this is uh the Bears' highest percentages of drives ending in three and outs. Um, so the Bears, if you recall, were 55%, uh, I believe, going into the Texans game. We are now down to 35%. So uh, the Texans are at 32%. They went down too, which not a great sign for the Bears, but that's okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically. It was... And the Giants are at 29. Fun fact. So Giants suck. Anyway, no one likes New York, according to Tony. Right, Tony? That's a fact. I hate New York. Everyone hates New York. New York stinks. Ugh. New York absolutely stinks. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, it's going to smell a lot nicer because the Bears are there and we actually do our laundry. So uh, Justin Fields is kind of the first topic we're going to hit on today. Let me bring that up for you guys real quick. Is that um, overall, just Justin Fields as a whole has only completed 23 passes through three games. Yeah, uh, it's you know, I, nope. I, I what can you say? What can you say to that? I th I think that every analyst, ESPN analyst, has brought up the fact <laughs> that the last Bears quarterback to do that was from like nineteen, I think it was like eighty two or something, and then he ironically was the Bears quarterbacks coach in twenty thirteen and twenty fourteen, and that was another horrible year for Mark Tressman and the Chicago Bears. <laughs> so the I think the Bears are just cursed all time of quarterbacks. But Definitely. I don't th I don't think I don't expect a breakout game against the New York Giants, but I'm expecting more than 20 passes this upcoming game because the Giants only have three sacks so far this year. Bad. And they're ranked 30th overall in quarterback pressure. Horrible. They and our offensive line is good. Uh, all things considered, our offensive line is good. So in reality, this is the easiest team that the Bears have gone against so far uh, in regards to quarterback pressure. Just putting that out there, Tony. I think that's a good stat. Yeah. So you said you don't know, you don't think this is going to be the breakout game for the Bears. I actually think things kind of things are aligning the right way. The Bears got a little swag about them, a little confidence. I whether that is earned, it is not up to me uh, to me to decide. But hopefully, the players are feeling that. Eberflus has a winning record now, coming in against the Giants team that technically uh, uh, was it a short week? Yeah, it was Monday night, right? Yeah, technically a short week. They just suffered their Which first loss. Yeah, Which yeah, they lost. suffered their first loss, and it wasn't a, it wasn't exactly a pretty loss either. It wasn't one of those. wasn't a shootout like, oh boys, we got all the talent that's here. It was. They kind of got. Uh, uh, Dallas should have put up way more points. CD Lamb just decided to stink for the entire first half. That's a whole different story. Uh, but it, it, the Bears might have found the Giants in a nice little lull where they're starting to doubt themselves. Like, oh, is this the guy? Is this the coach? Is Daniel Jones the quarterback? Which I mean, I know we've never. Um, thought that about our quarterback, so I can't imagine. But uh, it, <laughs> things might be things might uh, align nicely for the Bears here. I, I, you know, I, I think why not? You know, uh, at point. the same time, like, kind of why not the Bear? I mean, we're gonna bring the Giants back to reality. The Giants were supposed to stink this year. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just putting that out there. Is that the Giants were supposed to be butt when they play any team this year, and they start two and zero, and Saquon Barkley is back to his old self. 
which is not fair, especially the week that I'm playing him in fantasy. So, you know, best of luck to all you guys who have him on your fantasy team. But at the same time, I think that the I, I think that Justin Fields, he is going up. We're going to go uh, into it in a little bit about how uh, the Bears are going against a pretty good secondary in the New York Giants, all things considered. But I'm not saying much because Daniel Jones absolutely stinks. He does not deserve to have the gold captain patch on his jersey. So uh, let's go back. So, you know, Tony, I think that he he just needs to have a big play to get his confidence up. I think that's what Justin Fields needs to do. He knows he's bad. He admits it. He admits it in interviews. Uh, but the QB1 needs to do better than this. And he's on a little bit of a tight leash. I think. I think he's on a, a comfortable leash right now, but if he struggles against the Giants in this kind of game where the Bears can go three and one, if the Bears win, no, no matter what, his leash is going to get like, you know, when a dog is running and like, you know, you have that button that you get to press it. You know what I'm saying? George McCaskey, Ryan Poles, Matt Avery is going to go, ah, that, 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 not, you're not doing your job. Come on, come back. So I, I think that he's on a little bit tight of a leash if he doesn't have at least a 200 yard passing game this game. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I do think, and we'll, we'll obviously talk about the defense a little more, but I do, because I do think the giants offense lacks a little luster. So I think the bears defense can get some stops either deep in giants territory for some turnovers. Like you said, with the big play, obviously I'd love it to be a 80 yard touchdown, you know, something crazy like that, but that big play might be something like, okay, the, the, they capitalizing off a turnover, just something small, but just enough to be like, okay, we, you know, did our job check mark. Okay. What's the next check? Just, just kind of getting in a routine almost of doing the things you're supposed to do. You're expected to do. Um, and that, I, I do think that's going to happen. I really do. And Justin Fields started to look good. I give him credit toward the end of that Texans game. I mean, I know he had that crucial interception, but he bounced back after that and was able to make a couple nice plays to Darnell Mooney and one nice play to Cole Komet. The running attack was working, though, which we'll get into in a minute. Yeah. But he showed flashes that his confidence is slowly coming back. Uh, I mean, after that Niners game, his confidence was sky high, and Green Bay brought him back to the planet. So um, I don't think this is all on him either for the slow start. I think it's a combo of the play calling and also the supporting cast, which we'll get into in a minute as well. Uh, but Tony, anything else before we go into the Bears offense? Uh, no, I, hey, I'm going to keep riding with Justin Fields until that boat sinks or train crashes or whatever vehicle of transportation, mode of transportation uh, reaches carrier the pigeon. end of the line. That's my go, official statement. I'm going carrier pigeon, and you know, a big pigeon, a, a prehistoric pigeon. Yep, until it um, splats into a window where we're on those prehistoric pigeons for Justin yeah. Fields. All right. So anyway, let's go back to the game. Uh, yeah. Bears. So Bears running attack is going to be the big topic of our first offensive uh, stat line. Le the running key, the running game is key for this offense. Clearly, last week, Khalil Herbert twenty carries, one hundred fifty seven yards for two touchdowns. I mean, do the math. That's a lot of yards per average. <laughs> just put it. Just being completely frank with you guys. Uh, I think it's like seven point three yards per carry. And then David Montgomery also before he got injured, which we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, three carries for 11 yards before his injury. And he had a couple, he had two of those were really nice runs. Uh, the reason why his sat line didn't look better was because his uh, injury was a tackle for loss, unfortunately. Uh, a knee injury is the conclusion he is day to day, but he is questionable as of right now to play. Um, but Tony, I, I think it's going to be a good day in the running back room. I absolutely do. And I think what's lost in all the, especially the mainstream media that isn't just Bears local media, but Bears media too, is it's, oh my gosh, Justin Fields barely throws it. He barely throws it. If we weren't also running the ball, yes, I would be freaking out about the Bears, but we are, we're, we lead the league in, uh, in, uh, average rushing yards, I believe, uh, we per do. game, technically. I know, I know we're three games in. I get all that. But I mean, we have just been thrashing teams, even the Packers, you know, uh, the best team that we played, the Packers. We thrash them. So I I think it's gonna keep going. I I just I I love Khalil Herbert so much. And hopefully I, Montgomery plays, obviously we'll we'll see. But um I think I wouldn't be guys... worried if Tristan Ebner plays though. I, I think that the Bears, if mm -hmm. they're going against an easy defense, you know, the Giants have given up back to back hundred yard rushing games. They haven't done triple, so back to back to back hundred yard rushing games since two thousand five. Fun little stat. Tony brought fun stats. I think I would bring one. That's a good one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that I think that all things are pointing up for, you know, the running game. And in Tristan Ebner, I think is a great run, a great steal so far. He's a versatile back. He actually, 
Uh, I believe he's leading the league right now. I saw this stat somewhere. He's leading the league in kick return yards. So, Tremendous. you know, and, and we, we are saying he's not fast, but he bulldozes over guys. Very big fan of him. Um, that may, uh, sorry, I'm just going to uh, mentally attempt to not, not fact check it, but just work it out here. He may just because the uh, the 49ers game, there was a lot of kicking. Did he play in that game? But uh, he did. In the, I, I guess the Packers didn't kick, or I guess they kicked off technically a lot. Uh, but then the Texans did punt a lot. So if it just kick return or return yards? Return yards. Return yards. So it, it could work. I was just trying to think the the Ravens, uh, D- D- Chevy, whatever, not the actor. Yeah, uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever that guy's <laughs> name is. Uh, he did have that like 108 yard return. So, I mean, even being mentioned in that is still good because that's obviously something we, Tariq Cohn was kind of supposed to be that guy and he wasn't. And we've been missing it since uh, Devin Hester. I agree. I miss Devin Hester, but Velas Jones Jr. might be back. We're going to get into that. Oh, God, the injury report's going to be fun. Um, so going up with our next topic on the offense, the offensive line needs to continue to progress. But the off- but the stock is up. Like if you're if you were investing at the beginning of the season, you were buying penny stocks, and this is like before Bitcoin went to sixty thousand dollars a coin. So mm-hmm. the offensive line stock is up. There still is room for improvement. I would personally give them a B minus right now, all things considered. I think they're still developing, but they're not as bad by any means within the last seven to eight years of offensive lines for the Bears. I think they're pretty darn good. Yeah, I would probably go what C minus maybe a, a high D plus for pass, uh, pass protection. Just we've learned it's not always there. I don't think that's yeah. Okay. That's okay. my point is it, it hasn't been terrific, but it hasn't also always been their fault, but they're, I mean, they're, uh, they're right. Jackson Jones has, has been, been doing great. Yeah. Their run blocking has been incredible though. So, I mean, it, I think B minus maybe even a solid B if I was really going to sit down pen to paper and figure it out. I think that's actually a fair grade, which is great. Yeah. Like you said, that's crazy to think about coming in. And if you go back to our la- the episode that I just did on Wednesday, it's about all about the Bears offensive line and where they rank. So stay tuned for that. I mean, or not stay tuned. You can go check that out after the video if you want. Uh, but last week they had a total of 281 rushing yards, which is pretty darn good. And Bears are also playing, again, the 30th pass rush defense in the NFL, which is bad. So, you know, Braxton Jones and Tevin Jenkins have shocked everybody because everyone was like, why is a left a left tackle rookie from the fifth round starting at left tackle? It's working out pretty darn good. Thank you, Ryan Poles. And then mm-hmm. Tevin Jenkins literally was benched for a while, and now he's a starting right guard, and he's also doing fantastic. So, I, I, I mean, and all things aside, Larry Borum, I think, is doing a great job run blocking, still improvement. Obviously, we've known that in the uh in the or he's doing great run blocking pass blocking he's got to get improvement cody white hair is good as always sam mustafer a lot of people have in different feelings of him stats say he's good i know that he got absolutely blown up against the packers so hopefully this week that he can turn that around but all things are up for the stock market in the chicago bears offensive line just want to put that out there yeah the one thing i'm still going to keep an eye on is the uh, lucas patrick rotation how they keep rotating him in i hate it I hate it too. There are, t- I've seen a couple plays that people kind of cherry pick where it's like, wow, look at, he came in with this energy and it worked. I overall think I hate it. I, I'm going to still, jury's still out for me, uh, but it, it feels weird. You'd think you'd want your, maybe Tevin Jenkins is like, hey man, I just need a, I need a break every, every once in a while. And that's, there's some sort of agreement we're unsure of. It's probably not that, uh, but. But also Patrick started last week at right guard and then rotated it. So they switched it because usually mm-hmm. Jenkins starts. But who knows? Sam Mustafer, until he is proven otherwise, is probably going to be our center because it, it's working for the Bears right now. So offensive line stock is up and they're going against a pretty bad uh, pass rush defense. Knock on wood because last I remember the one time we were in New York, we had like, what, eight sacks before halftime it was horrible. Oh, Jay, Jay Cutler, Cutler getting his head bounced off the turf. Yeah. Hate it. Hate it. Don't want to yeah. talk about it. Uh, on to better things are, you know, better topics is that the receivers need to take advantage, though, of every opportunity that they're they're given. And, I'll, you know, I think St. Brown kind of gets a pass because, you know, he's taken advantage of everything so far. He had that really awesome run. Even though it wasn't a pass, it was a like a kind of like a pitch to him uh, against the Texans. And he ran it for like 33 yards, I think. And then he had a 24-yard reception. And he has a touchdown, a passing, a receiving touchdown this year. But Cole Komet and Darnell Mooney have been quiet, all things considered, considering they're the starters. 
Uh, again, low passing numbers in this offense, but they, uh, when they're given chances, they need to take advantage of them. Donald Mooney had, I think, two drops against the Texans. Cole Komet has had a drop every single game so far this year. Even if it's just what, I mean, I, they're on my fantasy team, I know, but they're on the bench now until they prove me otherwise. Yep. Will Herbert's on my flex. I was so happy to pick him up, mm -hmm. but, but Darnell Mooney, but when they, when it works, it works. I mean, it started to work against the Texans. So I'm going to take that and be like, okay, week four, use that build off it. Bears could actually be pretty darn good coming into, you know, week four against the giants. Yeah, I agree. We just gotta, I, we just haven't seen enough passes probably overall. Again, the drops stink, but honestly, maybe Komet's just surprised. He's like, oh man, I, <laughs> I never see the ball. <laughs> what is this thing coming at me? He just doesn't know. Uh, yeah, we got to get, uh, I think the jury will still be out of my overall grade on him. I'll say, uh, but they, like you said, every I'll, opportunity, you cannot waste opportunities. Like, like we have, I'll put this time. out. I'll put this out there before we go into the defense and we have to give our quick announcement is I'll give it till week 13. So I'm giving Justin Fields a ton of time and Cole Komet a ton of time to turn it around. If it comes to week 13, I'm going to start hitting the panic button a little bit. Okay, that's fair. right around the bye week. I think that's, yeah. Right, yeah, okay. right around the yeah. bye week. Yeah. And when things start getting serious, that's when the panic buttons hit. Uh, we're still early though. A uh, quick announcement for you guys. Just want to make sure that you guys know of this because we want to make sure we get it into this episode is that we are hosting our first ever viewing party at Murphy's Bleachers in Wrigleyville on October 9th, 2022, Sunday, Bears, Vikings, Bears at Vikings. Uh, doors open at 11 o'clock. Please show up uh, when you can, if it, whether it be at halftime, whatever. We're going to have prizes. We're going to have free beer while supplies last. Big asterisks on that. Uh, and yes, it's not, it's not just one beer I'm giving away for, free. we're giving away for free. We're giving a ton of beer away for free. Uh, but come and watch what, uh, come hang out with us. We're gonna be interviewing some of you guys. Make sure that you find Tony, myself or Nick Barr. Uh, but stay tuned for that. We're very excited for that viewing party. Uh, let's quickly go through the defense. Cause I know that I've been talking about the fricking uh, thunder and rockets just had a eight player trade. Um, so that's cool. Uh, but the defense, uh, when I hit on this super quickly before we go into injury report and our three keys to the game, uh, defensively, it's going to be a good day for the secondary. Again, they're playing Daniel Jones, who is the only quarterback that passes. Uh, he's the, old, he's right ahead of Justin Fields. That's not saying much in regards to passing yards. He doesn't have oh, any games over 200 yards passing this year. Just putting that out there again, the Mitch of New York giants. 82.6 QBR, Mitch Trubisky rushes Mitch all the time. Better. Mitch is better. No, Mitch I'm better saying I'm saying better. Mitch under Nagy. Mitch, I Mitch know, under Nagy. I know. I'm protective of my baby boy. I still have a T-shirt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So uh, legends don't. Uh, uh, what is that? Legends never die or whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool stuff. Field. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sam Lott. Uh, Heroes but get Lott, remembered. Legends never die. There it is. All right. Tony's um, big baseball guy. Yep. Um, Jaquan Brisker, Eddie Jackson, and even Kendall Vildor. I know I hate, I hate on him a lot and I, it's not that I hate the guy. I just hate when he messes up, have do, been doing a fantastic job this year. You know, Jalen Johnson went healthy and then Kyler Gordon has been progressing overall, been a great running, uh, against the run defensive back. He's shown progress over the last three weeks about not getting burned. Also in coverage, he still did get burned twice against the Houston Texans. I'll put that out there, but he was burned a lot more against green Bay and he was burned a ton against San Francisco. So Again, getting up to the speed of the NFL. Um, quickly want to go into also the Bears defense needs to stop the run. Barkley is the number two rusher in the NFL with 317 yards against the 30th ranked uh, rush, uh, rushing defense, not pass rushing defense, rushing defense. We cannot let him have a big day. Roquan Smith needs to have another 16 tackle game. Tony, what are you what are you doing to stop Jake? I mean, I, I think also Nicholas Moreau needs a huge shout out. I think he's been doing a great job. And I would love to see Jack Sanborn out there. That's I'm just putting that out there before we go into injury report. Yeah, me myself, I'm curling up at a little ball and begging for him not to hurt me. If I was in charge of the Bears, though, the Bears defense specifically, I mean, you gotta do you have to play the kind of defense the teams would play against us with Mitch and Fields, where you just load the box. You just force him to throw it. If they beat you deep because they've had some injuries in the secondary. Um, obviously Sterling Shepard was a big loss last week for them or uh, not yeah. in, the secondary, in the receiver room. I apologize in the receiver room. Uh, you got to just load the box, dare him to throw because Saquon is so dynamic that you just, you can't let him beat you. It's like double team, double team LeBron because, you know, make someone else beat you, make, make Deion Waiters beat you, something like that. So that's, I think that's my biggest thing. It's a very overarching take. Um, and I do have one stat before we go into the injury report. And that is uh, about the Giants offense and the Bears defense. 
The Giants have not scored a first half touchdown this season. And the Chicago Bears defense has not allowed a second half touchdown this season. Uh, stay tuned for my score prediction and see how that shakes out. Yeah. And so let's go into, we are at the 20 minute mark. So thank you all for sticking with us. Uh, let's go into our injury report very quickly. I had that up on my phone and I'm sorry. I closed Now I have it. Hey, that's not cool. Okay. We got it. Okay. So linebacker, Matt Adams with a hamstring did not practice. I don't think he's going to play this week again. Uh, back to back did not practice. Uh, Dame crude shake hamstring also did not practice back to back. Wow. Bears have hamstring issues. You guys got to stretch, get those bands, you know, stretch mm -hmm. them out. Um, Ryan Griffin, it went from limited to did not practice today. So, and that's an Achilles injury. Jalen Johnson quad did not practice. I don't expect him to play against the giants this week. Back-to-back -back practices, a limited for Velas Jones Jr. I think he might play one play this week just to get him started going. It all depends on uh, how he does. We're recording this also on Thursday night, by the way. So it really depends. And make sure you follow us because we will have updates for that. Uh, Dave Montgomery did not practice ankle, knee. I don't think he'll play. Roquan Smith, or Ro Robert Quinn is out with illness. Ooh. Oh, ouch, bad, not good. Uh, Cairo Santos was out with a personal reasoning. Uh, he's all good otherwise. Roquan Smith, quad limited, that's good. And then Sterling Weatherford, linebacker, ankle was limited. So not bad. And then if you go to the Giants, they're missing a ton of wide receivers and defensive backs. Uh, Cradadius Tony is uh, questionable with a hamstring injury. One Dale Robinson is questionable with a, a knee injury. Wide receiver Sterling Shepard is out with an ACL tear. Yeah. Defensive end <laughs> Leonard Williams is questionable. Uh, and everyone else on this, what I'm about to name is our corners, and they're all questionable. Aaron Robinson, Justin Lane, and Nick McLeod. Tony, anyone impactful before we go into three keys of the game? Uh, it just overall, the receiver group, just having three guys out. Kadarius Tony obviously is a, um, is a guy I know people are really high on. I have Wondell, uh, Wondell, Wondell Robinson on my fantasy team. Deep sleeper, uh, might not pan out this year. So, uh, but like, uh, yeah, the secondary has got to eat for the bears. So that just builds up in the, in the, uh, offense for success. I love it. Just make New York, uh, Chicago bears eat, or the new, the new stadium, we're, uh, well, no, they're Arlington's west of the city. Never mind. I was gonna say if we're going east, you know, we're already starting to get used to that that vibe. Just forget mm -hmm. that comment. That was stupid. That was a great. Uh, I need to. It was a good point if I was right. Um, so three keys to the game. Uh, I'm going to start with number one: run the ball. Uh, get. You know, Giants have the tenth best pass defense. Who has number nine? The Bears. Uh, and so their passing defense is tough. With an asterisk next to it, I guess. Uh, I'm just putting that out there. Fields are, uh, you know, they need to find a way to force the New York Giants to pass the ball. Bears have the ninth best pass defense in the NFL through three games, but the Bears have the 30th best rush. So that's 30th worst. I, you know, I always forget how to say it. Uh, but they're the 30th rushing defense in the NFL through three games. Saquon Barkley, again, is looking like his old self. And if the front seven can find a way to contain him, Giants are forced to throw the ball. Daniel Jones is not a passing quarterback. He has to run it, and then that's a, just a whole other trouble for him. Bears will be fine if they force him to run the ball. And then finally, score in the first offensive drive. You know, the Bears getting that confidence, especially Justin Fields or Khalil Herbert, sets the tone for the game. That's what the Bears need to do. Mm -hmm. And heck, if they start on defense and they turn it around for a turnover or anything, just get that confidence for the offense. Those are my three keys of the game. Yep, score on the first drive. Uh, just like that Packers game, you know, come out on top. I agree, Nick. Uh, so my three keys, first one, stop the run. Uh, mine are going to be a little repetitive because they have the same mistakes. They have the same issues. So, I mean, you know, sue me. Chain, it's the Bears' fault. Stop the run. Sue me. Take one Barkley. <laughs> I think that one's that one's pretty obvious. Uh, we obviously went into that. I'll leave it there. Uh, my second key: get off the field on on third down, and, and not even third down. Like you said, get a turnover the first uh, first drive of the game. Get your defense that extra rest. Obviously, it's good for the Bears' offense to be out there as much as we uh, they can be. But it's just just take a breather. Just just get a break. Uh, and then see the smart plays. The Bears, I think, had, what was it, six penalties last week? Yep. Uh, six penalties for 32 yards. 32 yards, not terrible, but you got to, you just got to play smart. Can't let them beat you. Um, and that is obviously, that's actually gotten better as we've gone along, which I appreciate. So, and yeah. I agree because the Bears are going to win 24 to 14. I think it's going to be a sloppy game, but both heavy rush, running teams, weak passing teams. I think it's going to be a defensive battle. Bears on top, though, 24 14, and will be 3 and 1 after their game in New York. So I alluded to this earlier about the Bears and Giants. Bears not giving up touchdowns, Giants not scoring touchdowns. Bears 27 0 shutout. I hate New York. You hate New York, too. 
get out of here. Forget about it. Uh, <laughs> Bears win. Bears roll three and one. New York goes crying back to, I guess, New York. That's it. Tony, have you ever been in New York? Nope. Never will. Never will go. <laughs> I've been to Cooperstown. That's as close as I want to get to New York. Uh, would you, but you've entered, so you've entered the state of New York, but you'll never go to New York City. Yes. Yeah. I have no problem with the state. I have a problem with the city, you know. Gross. Uh, it's the people. same thing. It's the same thing at the end of the day. But anyway, boo. so he's boo. Boo. Big that was boo. It. Yeah, go ahead. Well, with that, thank you very much for joining this pregame episode of Just Another Year Chicago. We'll be back Monday. Make sure that you follow us on all of our social media. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys next time.